All right, I made a very difficult decision, a decision that impacts many people. It's a decision that I do not take lightly, and I fully understand that student athletes, staff, <coughs> donors, and fans will be frustrated and critical of that decision. I informed Coach Clays that he's no longer a head football coach and that we will honor his contract and the contracts of the assistant coaches. When I was hired six months ago, I committed to everyone that we would have a program that competed at the highest level academically, athletically, and socially. With that as my foundation, I felt it was in the best long-term interest for our football program to make this change now. There is no reason why Minnesota football cannot compete at the highest level. Please know we will work hard to find a coach that shares that commitment to excellence academically, athletically, and socially. With that, I'll take questions. Mark, uh, how did Tracy react to it when you told him? Professional. He was disappointed, but he understood. When you, say, when you say honor the contracts in full for Tracy's contract or just the buyout? We'll honor the contract in full for Tracy and the assistant coaches. How soon do you want to have a new guy, or do you expect to have a new guy? Uh, you know, I, um, I've had to conduct two searches before, head football coaching searches and other coaching searches in my time as athletic director. It's going to feel like years, but we'll move quickly. But again, I, in PACS, the student athletes, the fans, everybody's paying attention, but we'll be efficient and quick as possible. But again, it's going to feel like eternity because we need to find the right have person. Have talked to anybody yet? Contacted anybody? Uh, I have received phone calls from people, but again, we will move as quickly as we can to find the best fit for Minnesota. Mark, Mark what was going on? How much pressure do you feel from outside groups or boosters to make this decision? Chip, you know, when I was hired, again, we, we talked about coming here and, and creating a program that makes all of Minnesota proud. You know, we talked to our coaches, we talked to our student athletes, that M never comes off. And these are tough jobs. You know, it has not been an easy six months for me. But we will not waver from our commitment to provide that great experience for all students, athletes, all students on our campus. And so I hear people, you know, the great thing is I get a lot of emails from fans. I get that fans are frustrated. I get that students are frustrated. I hear them. I read those emails. I really do. And I try to respond to them when I can. But I didn't feel pressure from the outside forces. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, uh, I was hired to be the athletic director here in Minnesota. And I'm thankful for the support I have from President Kaler, from our board leaders, to make this change, a change that will help us move forward. Mark, what was the timeline for this decision? Why like today? I mean, this is something that obviously stems from something that happened weeks, months ago. Why like today? Well, you know, I, I think it was important after the bowl game, uh, you don't want to make decisions based on emotion. You know, and I think, um, you know, we had a chance to take a step back. Uh, obviously, I evaluate our program daily, just like I'm evaluated daily. And uh, we felt like today was the right day to make this decision. Was Tracy fired for just cause or without? Uh, he, again, we will honor his contract, his full contract, and the contract of the assistant coaches. Mark, can you clarify on that? When you say honor his full contract, are you going to pay him the full amount that he had, or is there is a buyout listed? We will honor his contract, the full amount that he was that was due to him. Mark, uh, how much did the tweet have to do with uh, the firing? This isn't about one specific incident. You, you know, I, I've been here six months. I've had a chance to look at that program and all of our programs, and I don't think it's fair to say one thing. Uh, I think the events over the past few weeks underscored some of the, the concerns and some of the things I've been seeing with that program. Why, why did it take so long to clarify Tracy's role or how the whole thing came down in terms of suspending the players? Because I mean, that's been out there for several weeks, and we just clarified it today. You know, Chip, uh, I can't tell you how frustrated our fans are. You know, I see the emails, how frustrated donors are, season ticket holders. And what's difficult about that is I can't speak about the specifics of that case because of the privacy, the student privacy laws. And we take those laws very seriously here at Minnesota. What I can talk about is having a program that operates with integrity in class, academically, athletically, and socially. And again, we clarified that today. Mark, understanding you've been here six months and you've dealt with the alleged incident uh, almost the whole football season, but this staff has a track record of six years of very minimal off-field issues. Did you take that into account? What I took into account, what, what was in the best long-term interest for our program? 
And as I said before, there's no reason why we can't compete at the highest level. We got a phenomenal football stadium. We have Athletes Village, you know, a great project that's gonna be done a year from now. We have a world-class institution academically. We have all the pieces of the puzzle. And I made the decision today because I feel moving forward, we can find a leader who embraces what Minnesota is and what we want to do long term. I don't disagree. Academically, the team was doing well. We finished nine and four. You know, if I could show you all the emails I got after the Wisconsin game, I mean, that's the great thing about our fan base. You hear from them. But again, moving forward, there's no reason why we can't compete at a high level academically, athletically, and socially for all 25 programs, for all 700 student athletes. Mark, when you talk about a program with integrity in class, uh, this football team led the Big Ten when they targeting talent. Does that kind of factor into your decision at all? Again, I think it's looking at the, the whole program <clears throat> and, and things that go into, you know, as I talked about, it's, you can't make a decision like this on one thing. You know, and again, I can't, I don't mean to repeat myself, but I can't stress, I don't take these decisions lightly. I have impacted a lot of people. That's very hard. I've we impacted lives. We understand yeah. that, that. There are a lot of things that go into this decision, clearly. And I'm wondering whether this one piece of it was something that may have gone into it as you evaluate what Tracy and his staff did. It was part of the overall evaluation of the program, yes. Well, uh, obviously, paying them in full under their contract is going to be expensive, and hiring new staff and coaches going to be expensive. Did you have to sell President Kaler or the Dean Johnson or anyone on the financial component of? You know, again, Chip, I'm thankful that they support this decision, you know, and they understand uh, the impact. But again, we, we, we will work our way through that process. From the early calls that you've gotten, do you sense there's a lot of interest in this job? Or, well, some coaches say, that guy just won nine games and got fired. Why would I want to go to Minnesota? Again, I go back to world class academic institution. We compete in the best conference in America. We're in a wonderful state, a wonderful community. There's no reason why it can't be done here, and we intend to go out and find the best fit to help us accomplish those goals. Mark, if you go on Twitter, the players are outraged. Um, some we've talked to saying pretty strong things. I mean, you anticipated anger. Is, it, uh, is this deeper than you might have expected? No, I mean, they have a right to be angry. They have a right to be frustrated. You know, I, I talked uh, you know, a week or so ago about this is a learning experience for all of us, and I get that. Uh, I'm hopeful that our students understand that that M never comes off. You know, they represent Minnesota. And we'll find a football coach, you know, and they'll have a chance to interact with that coach. And again, you know, my number one goal is to make sure we provide a first-class experience for all of our student athletes. And that's no different with our football program. So again, I get they're upset. I get they're frustrated. I understand that. And again, it's our job to find a leader who will take this program forward and unite all of us in one direction and one goal. Mark, a lot, a lot of their frustration seemed to concern the communication from you and President Kaler. I mean, how much culpability do you feel that you share in that, and how do you kind of bridge that gap and, and get, get back on the same page with them? Yeah, well, ultimately you're defined by your actions. You know, and, and the hard thing, you know, again, due to student privacy laws, and again, we respect those laws, I can't share everything. But what we have talked about since I've been here for six months <clears throat> is doing things the right way. High character, you know, integrity, being truthful, competing at a high level. That's what we can talk about. And we've had those conversations. Do you Mark, feel like you're like transparent you like enough at the beginning? Do you feel like you were transparent enough at the beginning because Coach Clay said he didn't read the report until after he got back from San Diego, but you mentioned that you thought everything got blurred after this meeting on the 13th. So do you, you think you were transparent enough from the get-go? I do. I, you know, I, I sat down with Coach Clays and John Cunningham, our Deputy Athletics Director, and he had the information that we had available. So I do feel we were transparent. Were some specifics, no specifics? What, what, was, in, what was available to the coach? He had the information that was available that I had that was available to me to make the decision we did to suspend the students. What would you say to the players that might be thinking about leaving? I think everybody needs to take a deep breath, including the Athletic Director. We've been through a lot. You know, I talked before the bowl game, we had an eight win season and people were upset. That gets me excited because we have expectations now, right? We have a great bowl win. 
That's awesome. You know, the expectations are high. They're set. But again, I think we all need to take a deep breath. We'll go out. We'll find a great football coach for the University of Minnesota, and we'll have a chance to move forward in a positive direction. Mark, with where this falls in the year and the outrage of some of the players, are you concerned about players transferring? Are you concerned about recruits who may change their decision and not want to come here without Tracy? Well, recruiting is such a big part of any program, you know. And and again, when we find our football coach, you know, people will respond, and, and he'll have a chance to interact with our current students and our recruits. But obviously, recruiting is a big piece of our puzzle. But again, I keep going back to we're in the Big Ten Conference. We're a world-class institution, a football stadium that's less than 10 years old, a brand-new football performance center that opens up a year from now, a brand-new student-athlete development center. We've got the pieces of the puzzle. Now we're going to go find a leader who can get us to where we all want to go to, which is winning the Big Ten Conference, winning a bowl game, and graduating our student athletes with class and integrity. But does, it doesn't necessarily have, whatever coach comes in, doesn't necessarily have a lot of time to get in touch with those recruits whenever the hire is. Are, are you, is there a thought of being resigned that this just might be something you have to deal with? Yeah, I think any athletic program in the country has to deal with that anytime there's change and transition. You know, again, we have something really positive to tell people, and we'll tell that story, and, and we'll get the right kids. Mark, when you spoke to the team a couple of weeks ago, according to by all accounts, the players, it didn't go that well. They were not happy with what they heard from you in the interaction. Any regrets there, or do you feel at all your responsibility for the boycott that followed after that? You know, Mike, the, um, what is frustrating, and again, people don't get this, I'm frustrated. I can't talk about it. I can't tell them the specifics. But again, we do talk about living in truth always, being first class. The logo never comes off. So again, I understand their frustration. You keep saying being truthful. So you were lied to, somebody else was lied to. Can you expound? Can you fill us in on that part of it? I'm not sure I followed it. I'm, who was lied to? Well, you said being truthful, being truthful at all times. What do you mean by that? I guess expound on that part of it, being truthful. I mean that when we talk to our students, we talk to our coaches, and we talk to our staff. I mean, my staff will tell you, I talk all the time about let's live in truth always. And I tell people that's really easy to say but hard to do sometimes. So that's just something I want our department to be defined, that we're truthful and transparent. Again, there's student privacy laws that I can't talk about those things. But again, I can talk about the values that are going to drive this program. The reason why I was hired to be the athletic director in Minnesota. We won't waver from those. Mark, you mentioned running a first-class program a number of times here. Are you evaluating it? Do you feel like you're falling short with it right now? The entire program? Yeah. What's disappointing, Chip, is we have 700 student-athletes, 25 sports programs, right? We have teams winning Big Ten Conference championships, teams going to the Final Four, and we're not talking about those things. You know, and you and I had a chance to talk a few weeks ago in my office, and I talked about creating a department where the focus is on our students and our coaches. I mean, people don't know this. We're the highest rated public institution in the country with respect to academic success for our student athletes. That's a great story. That's something we should be proud of, but we don't talk about those things. So those are things we're going to focus on. When you evaluate just the on-field product of what you saw from, from that group, I mean, what, what did you see as, as a team in, in terms of what made you make the decision to, to fire coach? Well, you know, I saw a team that competed, you know. Um, I saw a team that gave up halftime leads, the same thing you all saw. But again, it was just an overall evaluation of the program. And moving forward, we want to find a leader who embraces what Minnesota is about. And that's what our goal is going to be. Did you have any consideration in making the move earlier, even before the bowl game, in terms of allowing you to even have a little bit more time to look at prospective candidates and things? Or why did I guess why did you wait until after the bowl game to, to make that move? Well, as I said before, you know, I, I think it was important that we didn't make a decision based on emotion. You know, and, and I had a chance to to take some time. Uh, you know, again, this is a hard decision. And I don't take that lightly. And I didn't want to rush into a decision. 
and I wanted to make the best long-term decision for the health of our football program, for the health of our department, and that's what we did. Mark, did you do this solely, or did President Taylor get involved in it, or is it your call only? It, it was my decision. Obviously, I informed President Kaler and our board leadership, but this was my decision. I'm thankful for the support that he's given me and that our board leadership has given me. Based on what you can say, um, and when the players were reinstated in October, why was that decision made, given the fact that there was an ongoing school investigation? Yeah, again, Andy, I'm sorry. With the student privacy laws, I can't get into the specifics. What's the difference between the football and the other problems the basketball program had, many of them prior to when you took the job, but obviously they had a lot of issues, you know, the last couple of years as well. What's the difference? Well, again, Mike, I wasn't here. Uh, I'm not trying to dodge a question at all. Uh, what I am trying to do is to build a culture of excellence. I'm trying to build a, a department, and I believe I was hired for that. You know, I've been very blessed to work at a lot of great institutions. I've been blessed to work with a lot of really good people. Uh, and, and I am convinced that you can do things the right way, and you can win at the highest level, and you can graduate your students. And that's what we're going to strive for every day. Thank you.